Yeah. Um, that's where I, I figured that's where you were going. Yeah. Um, I know you do your homework. So I was just like, oh, man. I was just thinking this guy really had a tough one. These are some good questions. I don't think that anybody ever you, you are a genuine individual, man. And I could tell that right off the bat. And your, uh, your introduction, uh, you know, everybody, you've got that 30 second or that those five seconds to introduce yourself to somebody to make an impression. And you did just that. You did a really good job at, at your introduction. Um, and it was humble. It wasn't uh, in your face and like, hey, you got to get my podcast. You know what I mean? So um, you did a good job there. So keep that up. The soldier's heart, the soldier's spirit, the soldier's soul are everything. George Marshall. My guest on this episode of Passing the Torch is Travis Wilson, a 21-year military veteran who spent 13 years as a U.S. Army Green Beret. <clears throat> Travis entered the Army in 1995 as an airborne medic with, with the goal of one day becoming an 18D Green Beret medic. After six years in the service, Travis left the Army to attend Boise State University, where he studied exercise science and played hockey for the ACHA Club Hockey Programs. After completing school, Travis returned to the Army to complete his Special Forces training and was chosen to be an 18E communication specialist. He was then assigned to the 10th Special Forces Group out of Colorado Springs, where he remained until his retirement in 2017. While serving as a Green Beret, Travis also started a supplement nutrition store called Caliber Nutrition. After juggling the challenges of active duty and a supplement store along with multiple deployments, Travis decided it was time to retire and start his own product line called Alpha Elite Performance, a brand, a brand founded upon the consummate professionalism and high physical fitness standards characteristic of the Special Forces community. Established in Colorado Springs, Colorado, Alpha Elite Performance reflects Travis's dedication to the provision of high-quality supplements, not just for Green Berets, but for all active-duty military and civilians alike. He's also the Director of Mission and Program Delivery at the Green Beret Foundation. Business owner, patriot, and really cool guy, burly guy. Without further ado, <laughs> passing the torch with Travis Wilson starts now. First and foremost, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. How was that intro? That was really good, Martin. Very good. <laughs> was the burly? Was that your favorite part? I mean, my nickname in college was Wookie, and then it uh, became my call sign uh, when I joined the military. So it's you know, big Travis Wookie Wilson. So burly fits. You know, Wookie is uh, kind of burly. Yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, do you mind sharing the story behind Wookie? I had a beard and long hair when I was playing hockey. Uh, just <laughs> so, I, and I'm tall, so people just started calling me Wookie. So it stuck. <laughs> the girls liked it. <laughs> no, that's really good. Hey, uh, this is a couple of days late, but happy 15th birthday to the Green Beret Foundation. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, of that. Of course. When I say Camp McCall, what comes to mind? Ooh. <laughs> a lot of hard work, sweat, <laughs> tears, uh, and some occasions vomit. Uh, <laughs> so much comes to mind, man. Camp McCall, that's where it all happens. That's where boys go to become Green Berets. Boys go to become men. That's great. And I think we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But yeah. before we go down that path, why is life great right now? Life is great right Man, I don't know. Everything's just firing on all cylinders. Uh, I, that's all I can say. I, I, I don't have any uh, anything negative to say. Just life is great. One thing I wanted to ask, because I've been researching you, and I love the fact that we just met at, only two weeks ago at the yeah. – actually, two weeks ago today, because today's Monday. We met at the Mixer at the Military yeah. Influencer Conference. Um, but I – just super fascinated by your story and just uh, over the past two weeks i've actually started just reading, reading a lot about you and listening to you on various podcasts how did nighttime appreciation lead to alpha elite performance nighttime appreciation yeah so the reason i'm asking that because i think you were on american grip uh podcast with tim jensen yeah and you were telling you were talking about uh, jump. what led to your accident the jump right and you told the story <laughs> about what you guys called the yeah, that's um, right. I figured that's where you were going. Yeah, um, I know you do your homework. So I was just like, oh, man, I was just thinking this guy really has done his homework. Um, <laughs> yeah, nighttime appreciation. We 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 had a jump that uh, we decided to jump um, with that. We were actually there to jump with NVGs as one of the first uh, free fall teams to start doing so. Uh, 
And then towards the end, we decided that we were going to jump without MVGs. Nighttime appreciation, just kind of go back to jumping and following that green chem light in front of you. Uh, hopefully you're not seeing a red one because that means you're coming at somebody. Uh, so, um, yeah, nighttime appreciation jump. And I ended up having a, a near fatal free fall accident below 500 feet, had a partial uh, canopy malfunction. And there's no room for emergency procedures after 500 feet or below 500 feet. And uh, just kind of had to ride it in and rode it in hard. <laughs> that sounds a little. <laughs> no, I, take, I got, I got you. <laughs> take that how you want. <laughs> no. So, what do you tell yourself in that moment? Because there has to be, and how, how this overall process? How long is this? is this all in the matter? Of maybe two minutes or thirty seconds? But I'm oh, sure seconds. it probably felt like a lifetime, right? But it probably, I, I would imagine, felt like an eternity or much longer. But what do you tell yourself in that? In that? Um, you know, I. Honestly, I think I reacted. I started climbing the left risers because I started spinning to the right. So I started when I say climb the left risers, I'm just starting to pull on them, you know, to try and get some of that capability to go back to the left and straighten out. But that, I think um, I, I didn't really think anything other than just trying course correct this, you know, what was going wrong. And uh, before you know it, uh, there's the earth and it's you can hear it coming. So. Yeah, and I know you had a couple of surgeries. I think um, let me put my no I have my notes. I think I broke his back and multiple knee replacements. Yeah, well, um, no, no. I mean, broke my back only two knee replacements, partial knee replacements, but multiple knee surgeries, ankle reconstruction, <laughs> shoulder. Uh, but also, I mean, there were some other surgeries that were post service uh, for just wear and tear, like partial, you know, bicep tendon tears and all sorts of stuff. Elbow, elbow surgeries. So. Uh, so the big how did one, that? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and, and the big one was, uh, you know, I spent eight weeks at the brain treatment center in San Diego because, um, you know, I've, I've had a couple blast injuries, but also, you know, hitting my head, you know, when you bounce off the ground tends to uh, rattle things up. So spent some time at the brain treatment center to, to fix that. And how did all that lead to alpha elite performance? Well, I mean, when you have that accident and you think, well, the army's just going to kick me out, you know, I'm not going to make, make it back to the teams. Um, I was, I just started planning my, my exit and I, and I had to do something. Right. So I went to school for exercise science and was already, you know, I used supplements working out and stuff like that. And I thought, well, why don't I just open up, um, a store and I had the funds to do so. I, I wasn't one of those guys that uses deployment money to buy a charger or a challenger or a Corvette. I saved that stuff up <laughs> and, uh, and I started a store called caliber nutrition and, uh, selling other people's products, you know, other, other supplements. So, um, and, and, but but I, I ended up healing pretty well that, uh, you know, I stayed on the teams for a little bit, maybe six months. And then, you know, it, it was just recognizable that I wasn't going to be who I was prior to that accident. Uh, fortunately, this was, you know, towards the later latter part of my career. Um, so I went over to the Intel side of the house and yeah. stood up a, a team called the RSE and went through their first pipeline. So. And then, and then I had this store also while I was active duty. So uh, you talk about being busy. I, I love the fact that, so I'm, uh, I'm in the Air Force. I'm actually uh, an Intel analyst by, by trade for the Air Force. But um, yeah. so just, you know, being around Special Forces and all that, it's always, always really cool. So all that stuff, you know, your time as Green Beret, the, uh, the accident with the jump, the recovery, Alpha Lee performance, as you reflect back in your own life, what would you now, would you view as your core strengths? And then what are the areas that you're trying to explore more on a personal level? Core strength, um, I have always been pretty uh, headstrong, uh, lean forward in the foxhole and don't look behind you and don't quit, you know? Um, and, and even going through selection, I remember I wasn't the most physically fit and I wasn't the smartest, but I damn sure wasn't gonna fail and I wasn't gonna yeah. quit. Uh, so I just kept putting one foot in front of the other and, and leaning forward. Uh, and, and I kept moving, kept my mouth shut and, uh, and did the best that I could. Uh, and so I, I, I wouldn't say that I was the best green beret out there. I wasn't the smartest green beret. Uh, but for the most part, you know, <laughs> I kept my mouth shut. I did my job. Uh, I excelled in some areas and, and I wouldn't say I failed at anything as a green beret, but, uh, didn't do as well as others. 
So I think that core strength is just determination um, and a never quit attitude. And I, and I carry that with me today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something that I think that, uh, you know, I'm trying to figure out or, or I'm, I'm trying to find or follow more is faith. Um, you know, I, you know, you, you lose a lot of friends when you start talking about religion, but I lost uh, my way with God uh, a number of times, still kind of struggle with it today. But I think that's one that I'm working with really hard now is, is trying to be a better human um, and, you know, get that, uh, get the faith back. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm on so. that same, I'm the same way, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you said uh, during the training and all that, you were you kept your mouth shut and tried to stay quiet, but you're a big guy, so obviously you stood out, but was there ever a time where even when you were quiet, you still got called out? The reason I asked that question, because I released an episode a couple weeks ago with a former Navy SEAL, uh, David Brown. He was a five foot three, 110, when he was in SEAL training, he was uh, five three, 110 pounds. And he shares a story in the training where at some point it had been a couple of weeks where the, until the instructors finally realized he was there, they're like, where'd you come from? He was able to blend in that entire time. But for you with your size, there's no way. Uh, but yeah, is there a way even it blew up in your face at all? Oh yeah. I got a few stories. I mean, you know, one, I'll go back to selection. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. And so in selection, uh, I, you know, I was just standing there and, and big old head sticking out above the crowd. He's like, you get up here on the, it was about 1130 or whatever. It was right before midnight. And he's like, you get up here on the stage and, and, and sing the national anthem. Ooh. Uh, it was before midnight. And if you mess up, you're going to, you're going to go home. And uh, so I, of course I was nervous and, and it was right at the beginning of selection for the most part. So there was like 300 candidates there. And uh, I started singing the national anthem and uh, what, what I think, also save you because I know the words of the national anthem, but you get nervous, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I started singing it and I was just thinking in my head, gosh, don't, don't mess this up. But everybody else started singing it as well. That's so awesome. yeah, we all, we all, that was a good team effort there to keep me uh, in selection. So, um, but yeah, just standing out, you know, you big guy, get up here. Uh, but then, you know, again, in selection, um, Bitterman was one of the, the hardest instructors that we had at selection and he called me to the front of this movement uh, during team week and he was just dogging me and dogging me the whole time and, and and you know they they say they don't try and get people to quit but yeah they want to see if you're going to quit so he was just dogging me the whole time and i was dying we were moving out at his speed we all had rucksacks that weighed more than 55 60 70 pounds wow. uh, but we had to keep up with him and and I was a hurting unit. And uh, I don't know if it was him or divine intervention, but uh, I just remember him leaning into my my ear and just saying 500 more meters, that's it. And and this is not from a guy that I thought would ever, I took that to be a very kind gesture at selection because I didn't know how long we were going for. Um, but he said 500 meters. And and that's actually, it was funny is that I've taken that 500 meters um, story with me um, and a lot that I do now today, uh, you know, if I'm tired, uh, you know, if I'm just not feeling like doing something, I'm just like 500 meters, just go another 500 meters and you'll be fine. So, Man. but, but that was another, uh, you know, big guy, get up here. Um, <laughs> that's so. an amazing story because have you ever, have you ever seen that video? I don't know what movie it's from, but it's basically where a football coach and he's trying to inspire his team and he has the like the star player is being negative. So he has a star, poor, uh, star player blindfolded and he has to bear crawl across the field and he has a, another player on the team on his back and he's telling his kid like, hey, you only have to go 10 yards. But he's, he, ends up, he ends up going uh, the full length. Of, it's a great video. I'll have to send it to you if you've never seen I know, it. I, I, it's an older movie, right? Uh, I don't know how old. I mean, I would say probably sometime 2000 or beyond, not anything from the 90s or anything. And it might yeah. be like a Christian movie or something. I, I don't know because um, I didn't recognize any of the actors. But that's was it, what, did he die at the end? The I didn't have watched the whole movie. I've just seen that clip. Oh, I might have uh, just ruined it for you then. No, way to go, Travis. Way to go. Like, big guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> way, to, way to go, Wookie. <laughs> yeah, way to go, Wookie. Yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, hey, I want to go back to like the 500 meters because I love that story. Yeah. How do you how do physical struggles benefit us in mental ways? 
Physical struggles and mental health. Uh, well, I mean, let's just think about an object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest, right? Mm. Um, I have a huge problem with uh, guys, gals, um, veterans who have their entire career just kept moving forward physically and, and, and trying to be physically fit. And then when they retire, they think they don't need to do it anymore because, yeah. you know, they're not getting paid. Uh, and they don't have to get taped or any of that stuff or take a PT test. And and it really, really hurts them physically uh, because their bodies just stop. And, and we see it a lot within special operations. There's even a book written called um, The Operator Syndrome. And, you know, these guys have a lot of issues throughout their whole career. Um, but, you know, some of it, most of it or a lot of it has to do with, uh, you know, just the physical aspect and, and how they've been so physically fit for so long. And then they just abruptly stop. Well, that takes a toll on the body, which also takes a toll on the mind, all the good, you know, serotonin and all those good chemicals that are released when you're working out tend to disappear or, or dissipate. Um, and depression sits in. Um, there's not, a, there's nobody out there that could say, you know, I didn't feel good mentally after a workout. Uh, so huge proponent of, of physical activity during and after the military. I'm, I turned 50 in February and, uh, you know, as soon as I'm done here, I'll be in our gym out back, um, working out just to make sure that I get it in for today. And I don't care if it's, uh, you know, an hour or 30 minutes, I'll make sure to do at least 20 uh, of something, you know, just to keep moving. So, um, but yeah, mental health and, and physical fitness, they go hand in hand. If you're not going to be physically fit, then your mental health isn't going to be there either. That's and I've seen your Instagram videos where you're getting after it. So it's, it's really inspiring to me, especially knowing like your history with uh, injuries and yeah, for you and doing not just like doing dumbbell curls, like you're actually doing split squats with dumbbells, which can be brutal. And, and I actually worked out before this, uh, before we started recording this podcast, I did chest and back today. So I feel I'm basically a God right now. That's what yeah. I feel like. <laughs> I only have about two hours left before I shrink back down to reality. Uh, yeah. But I was, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm gonna talk to Travis today. I need to, I, I got to do the upper torso. So I did some chest and some. Uh, I have a garage gym, nice. some T-bar rows, and so I was feeling pretty good. So I'm feeling well, a little good. puffy right now. Yeah, yeah I like the puff. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so how do how do we focus on what our purpose is versus what it looks like to the outside world? Oh my God, I think only you know what your purpose is. The way to focus on that is to. So I'm a writer. If you, if, I mean, if I could show you my office right now, I've got a lot of whiteboards. Mm -hmm. um, and if there's, I write things down. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. That's a hard one for me because you focus on purpose. Man, I don't know. That's a tough one for me. Yeah, what, okay. what, kind of, I mean, what kind of answer are you looking for out of that? Because I, I mean. So that one, no, there's no specific answer. and There's no right or wrong. Um, I want to take a drink of some, but it's not your brand. So I'm going to drink it off camera. <laughs> No, that's fine. I don't have a, I don't have an energy drink. <laughs> I have a pre workout though. Yeah. Uh, I, I purpose, man. I, um, so many people struggle with that, and and I have I'm having I'm struggling with trying to get the words out. Uh, I think that I still try to. I'm trying to figure out my purpose too, because I've got my hands in, in so many different pots of things. That I own a supplement company. I, you know, I'm in the nonprofit industry with with Green Beret Foundation. I started yeah. my own nonprofit. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of speaking engagements for nonprofits for other types of um, benefits, like you know, homelessness, veteran homelessness. Um, so I'm constantly looking for my purpose, but maybe my purpose is just to to keep searching, but keep doing good while searching. I don't know. I think that's great, right there. And that to me, that I wasn't looking for a specific answer. It's just something. As you were speaking, a question I just felt compelled to ask. And I do think that for me, from the outside looking in, I think your purpose would be the, is, is serving others because I feel like from the short time I've known you, but even going back as I was reading about you and researching you, you're, you're giving back to others, you're serving others, which actually transitions, I think, nicely to the Green Beret Foundation. Can you share some uh, specific examples how the Green Beret Foundation has made a difference in the lives of veterans and their families? 
Absolutely. Uh, so the Green Beret Foundation, one, I've been an ambassador for the foundation for a long time. Um, they, th this was an organization that reached out to me when I got hurt without me having to reach out to them. That's awesome. And so I've just always pledged my allegiance to the to the Green Beret Foundation. Um, and I've supported other nonprofits that that give back to our Green Berets. It, it's a, so I mean, one example is myself and my injuries and my surgeries. The Green Beret Foundation came to me with, you know, a game ready device where, you know, the VA wasn't going to facilitate that machine. But, you know, having seven different knee surgeries, uh, they, they provided me with this device that was compressioned in ice, you know, and this machine was regulated, you know, the pressure of, of the anyway. They provided that for me, and it was phenomenal. It's a very expensive machine, but I was able to use it for both of my knee surgeries and ankle reconstruction surgery. Uh, but now, now that I'm in the pro director of mission program delivery here at the Green Beret Foundation, I can tell you that we have helped many Green Berets. Uh, we've given away uh, $15 million to Green Berets and their families. Uh, 86 cents on the dollar goes back to our Green Berets and their families. Uh, but we've sent guys to, you know, Warrior's Heart, which is a, a wonderful addiction and, and alcohol recovery um, out in, in Bandera, Texas. Tom Spooner started that. Um, he's a former CAD guy. Uh, we do a lot of medical devices as well where the VA fails and says, no, nah, you don't need that. Uh, but the doctor thinks that they do. Uh, you know, we'll step in and we'll pay for that medical device for those guys, whether it be, um, you know, Normatec leg device to... Uh, a oh, wow. gamma core, uh, you know, gamma core is something that, um, you know, you use it on the, uh, the vagal nerve and it goes from brain to stomach and it helps with PTS and migraines and all that. Mm. Um, we do a lot of SGBs, um, Stella ganglion blocks, um, alpha stems. Uh, if you can think of, if you're a green beret, uh, and you can think of it, then you just do a support for requests and, and, and we'll figure out how to get it done. Um, it was funny right before, you know, I got on this podcast with you. I had a Green Beret reach out to me and there's, an, you know, he's trying to get his buddy who's a Green Beret into Warrior's Heart um, because right now mental health and addiction issues seem to be pretty prevalent in our community. So, yeah. I think that actually ties into uh, my follow-up question was, what are some of the biggest challenges challenges currently facing the Green Beret community and how is the foundation addressing them? Well, I think the biggest uh <laughs> The biggest challenges right now with the special operations community, but Green Berets fall within that, are um, a sense of of uh, what's the word self. You know, of, uh, these guys are just losing their identity. Mm. There's a loss of identity. Uh, it, these guys have been at war for 20 plus years, you know, and they're starting to retire or get out um, medically, you know. It, it, and so that's the biggest problem right now is mental health is our biggest issue. And we're treating a lot of guys um, for mental health and, and trying to obviously keep them from committing suicide. We have a fund called the Andes Fund uh, within the Green Beret Foundation, which raises money for um, suicide awareness. And we, I wouldn't say prevention uh, for legality reasons. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, we're just trying to, I guess, I hate, we're trying to stop it, but how do you stop it? Right. I mean, yeah. So we're trying to get to those guys before they even think about that word um, or that action. So, um, and we're doing that a number of different ways through treatments, therapies, um, but also reaching out to these guys now with our next Ridgeline program that we started, which is our transition program um, for guys in, in 15 to 24 months out. Uh, and it encompasses, it's, it's, it's different than, you know, what most people will go through in a transition program with resume writing and all this stuff and how to speak yeah. in front of a, you know, or how to do an interview. This is mind, body, spirit is what we're trying to do at the Green Beret Foundation and reach these guys on a real intimate level um, and allowing them to, uh, you know, well, we start off with our VSOs and so they get to learn about their VA claims and all that stuff. But then it, it goes into uh, Stress Less Fridays where they get to talk about things they can't talk about with their spouse or their friends, uh, but they could talk about it with each other. Um, and in the middle of the week, they have another class uh, you know, whether it be finances, um, you know, where they should be now financially. Uh, this is just a number of things. It's a 10 week course that we do six phase, 10 week course. And they, uh, yeah, it's just all about mind, body, spirit, health and wellness, making sure that these guys are going to stay physically fit and getting them keyed up for the future and, and not slowing down mentally or physically. And so we're trying to reach them uh, so that they don't get to that 
big issue that we're having right now with with uh, mental health. No, it's it's an epidemic, and it's hitting not just Green Berets or even the Army at large, but across mm -hmm. uh, all branches of the military. And it's yeah, it's I don't know how to stop it. We just try to uh, help prevent as best possible. But with that, are there any programs, upcoming programs, or initiative, or anything you want to expand upon that the Green Beret Foundation is particularly excited about? And how can the community get involved to support the, those efforts? The initiatives. Well, well we actually have one up that's come. Uh, excuse me. We have one coming up that's called Task Force Tatanka. Uh, it, it's something I came up with um, kind of on my own. Maybe maybe help of some others. But if you think about, so I, I love to hunt, and so I have a buffalo yeah. in my office, and uh, and I respect all animals. Uh, you know, they all get a little prayer um, after I harvest them. Um, but I, so I have a Buffalo in my office and, uh, but if you know, the Buffalo goes through the storm, right? It doesn't go yeah. around the storm. It goes through the storm. It takes that the quickest way, th uh, through the, that ass pain, if you will. So, uh, task force to Tonka is just that the logo is the Buffalo with the soldier who's going along with the Buffalo. And then there's a soldier facing, uh, you know, in a rear echelon there, um, and uh and that's supposed to be us we, we're going to have your six and we're going to help you get through the storm so that that initiative task force to Tonka is is ultimately about um you know suicide prevention as well suicide awareness um, but helping these guys and raise money to to get these guys the treatments and therapies uh that they deserve and need uh, where you know the va will fail them and i'm, I'm writing uh these notes down so i'll make sure to yeah. link all that in, in the show notes before i get oh by the way i'm from oklahoma so uh, Buffalo is very, the story, the, I love that you shared that story because that's something I learned at an early age. And it's, yeah. it's one of those things that unless you, I don't know, it's just kind of a random thing, but I, I love that you shared that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. before I get into some lighter topics, I do have kind of one serious question. And then I, I have some lighter questions, uh, some lighter topics I think you're going to enjoy, but, All right. um, I want to discuss something I found about you that I think is very intriguing and it's about your father's humility. And there's a quote that I that I uh, read about you. You said, since my childhood, my Air Force pararescue father would sing parts of the Ballad of the Green Berets to me. He would tell me stories of their heroic actions in Vietnam and missions where he would help extract teams from hot areas. Not once did he mention anything about himself and his career. I love that humility and I love that story that you share. But my question for you is, what story would you want him to tell about you to other people? That's a tough one, man, because he's no longer with us. I, mean, I think if you that, had a favorite story or something that you're like, man, I'd, it'd be cool if he, you know, for him to tell the story if he were still with us today. <laughs> God. <laughs> he was all about embarrassing me when he was alive. Uh, <laughs> hey, this seriously. is my son, Wookie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, he, but he warned me when I was little. He's like, I'm going to embarrass the shit out of you when you're older. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> but, no, I think that. You know, he was a huge, there's a lot of times that I disappointed him having gone to a early on to a military academy after I graduated high school, but I quit. Um, I, I was just recognizing now that I was just too immature mm -hmm. uh, for that part of my life. Um, but he always used to write on the envelopes back then. We didn't have, uh, you know, computers and email. Uh, it was right before that. Um, he, on that, he would spell out attitude in the four corners, front and back of an envelope. Uh, every time I'd get a letter from him, which was weekly, and he'd write me weekly. And it was just gibberish or, you know, your mom made a pie, or your sister's doing this or whatever. But it was always attitude. I um, mean, really, really pushed attitude, have a good positive attitude um, and never quit. And that was his biggest thing was never quit and be happy and have a positive attitude. So um, once I matured, I really focused. I went back and I thought about my dad writing attitude on all of my letters that he wrote me um, and, and just started to focus on my attitude and it being a positive one. Uh, one that not only would I recognize, but, you know, that other people would recognize as well. Um, like you said, I have a big presence when I walk into a room, but I also want to have a positive presence when I walk into a room. So uh I, I would imagine he would tell that story that uh he he's he's responsible for me and uh having a positive attitude in, in majority of things that i do although my wife would say that i'm a negative nancy most of the time <laughs> no uh hey thanks for sharing that i hope that wasn't too deep or we're getting in the feels but i just nah. thought that was 
Uh, I appreciate you opening up and uh, I love that story. And actually, I just wrote down in my note or a note to myself that a potential title for this episode would be Attitude on Four Corners of an Envelope. Uh, yeah. We'll see. But man, that's a, yeah. that's a fantastic story. So again, thanks for uh, sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I could talk for days about my dad. He was a stud. Um, hey, I want to get to some some lighter questions. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, some other things that uh, kind of we talked about the, the military influencer conference. One, <clears throat> you said you're a hunter and I was, there's no other way to say it, but I was stalking Instagram because when I say I research, but you know, it's what I do. Yeah. I noticed you have a skull of a warthog. Uh, so what's the story behind that? So I was asked to come to Namibia and be of added value to some anti uh, rhino poaching units uh, or anti, yeah, rhino anti poaching. Anyway, uh, <laughs> went over there to really just kind of just offer my expertise and skills and um, showed up and these guys were phenomenal already, but um, they're constantly, you know, looking for assistance and new training and all that stuff. But anyway, I went over there and because, you know, I volunteered essentially to go over there and do that, uh, the owner of the it's also a hunting safari lodge and also a regular safari lodge for people to come see animals. But um, he asked me if I wanted to to hunt some animals. <laughs> and so I, I did. I hunted an impala and I, so I took a, a male impala as well. And then, but came across the warthog and I was a big boy and he was older and he had been in some scraps and some fights. Uh, he's got a broken lower uh, tooth. And if you've ever seen these things, I didn't realize that they're like razor blades. They are so sharp because they, they keep rubbing against each other every time they eat. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, you know, the, the teeth get really, uh, the ivory gets really sharp. Um, but we got close enough. We stalked him actually and got close enough for the shot, took the shot. And this warthog took off. Like I, I hadn't even, like I didn't hit it. And I was pretty upset, but my guide was like, you hit it. Trust me, you hit it. They're just resilient animals. This thing took off. Um, but before we could go find it, we were um, surrounded by about 41 elephants. And they were already coming, but we ended up getting surrounded by 41 elephants. I can send you some pictures if you want for your- Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That'd yeah. be amazing. And my guide is like, just stay here. Don't move any points. He's like, if, it, if, if, it, if any elephant's going to charge us, it's going to be that one because it had two babies. And I'm like, well, what do we do? He's like, oh, nothing. We're dead. I'm like, oh my God, bro. Like, <laughs> why did we do this now? Yeah. Uh, so, and I, and he's like, just stand put, stay here, you know, whatever. So I did. And then, you know, I kind of look around for a second. He's gone. And, it, and he just, he's doing whatever he's doing as a guy and as a bush, he's from the bush, he's from Namibia. And I, I finally see him like, 30 yards away with his stick and just standing there and looking at the elephants and they went around us. So they were headed toward us and then they just went around us. Uh, but we had to wait for those elephants to pass. And of course they did. I was nervous. So I started filming and taking pictures just in case I died. I wanted somebody to see how I died. Uh, and they passed. And so lucky is the dog that we called in to track my warthog because that thing took off and it really didn't get that far, uh, but Lucky did came in and, and, and found the dog or found the warthog. And man, I hit that thing where you would shoot it right behind the, in its heart region, right behind its shoulder blade. Um, and then that thing ran for, I don't know, a hundred yards with its entrails hanging. Um, they're just a resilient animal, yeah. but the story was awesome. I'll never forget it, you know, being surrounded by elephants um, and, and finding my warthog. So, but now he is, he is at my house. So that's uh did you get to eat the meat at all or is that even something you consume? No. Um at that those kind of animals there they uh feed the lions um because they have a lion feed so they'll take that meat and feed the lions. But I did eat giraffe and I ate zebra and I ate um, blue wildebeest and gemsbach. So everything you know that you eat there is something off of the land. So, so but by the way, we have we're joined by a wild beast, my dog in the background too. So if you hear all the noise, he's uh <laughs> He's going a little crazy right now. So I bet those 41 elephants, they were probably communicating with one another. Like, hey, guys, I know there's 41 of us, but there's one Wookiee over there. We, should, we shouldn't mess with that. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's that exactly game. what they were thinking, I'm sure. <laughs> I want to ask you uh, a, a new question I've been asking on a lot of my recent interviews is tell us a story about a recent friendship you made in the past two to three years and how that friendship came about. Uh, friendship in the past two to three years. Um, 
Man, I have made a lot. I meet so many people. I'll just name you a few real quick. Okay. Um, one, Jessica Manfrey. Uh, she, um, she wrote you your know, speech she, or whatever at, at a conference last year, right? Yeah. She, yeah. Well, she, she wrote my speech and that I, I did in Atlanta three years ago. Um, and just this year at Mick, people came up to me like, Hey, are you that guy that did that speech at BEO? Uh, and one of them happened to be the, the spouse of, uh, the Atlanta Falcons. I think she's, yeah, she, or the ex spouse. I'm not sure, but for her to remember that from three years ago, and she said it was yeah. pretty impactful that that meant a great deal. And, and, and I, I wrote this speech, but Jess just cleaned it up quite a bit, uh, and made it a little bit more eloquent. And then I just studied it. Um, but yeah, there was a number of people at Mick that came up to me and referenced that speech. And from that speech, uh, Jess and I uh, became really good friends. You know, she worked for We Are the Mighty, and now she's there yeah. doing things for Mick, among other things. And, and our friendship is, I just spoke with her today. So um, that's that's one good friendship that I think will last forever and has been very meaningful and impactful in my life. Um, another one's Eddie Wright, who is a, a Marine that I met on a fishing trip who uh you know went through fallujah and all that and he's he lost his arm both of his arms and uh and parts of his leg and stuff like that but we he ended up moving to montgomery texas and uh we just hit it off and we've been buddies ever since and uh he's a great dude he's the guy that you know has his own demons and challenges yeah um uh in, in you know i've always been here for him uh to assist where I can, uh, but he's just a good human and, and he's been a positive light on my life. Um, and then I'll, man, I've, my neighbors, I mean, I've just met so many wonderful people, people at the Green Beret Foundation, uh, my Ranger buddy, Derek, who is now a cop here in Montgomery, Texas. People are like, oh, you got to meet Derek. And they'd tell him, oh, you got to meet Travis. You guys are both soft. And we're just like, we don't cool. care, you know, like, great. And then we met and he's like, ah, damn, man, you're cool as hell, you know? So, um, yeah, so I've met a lot of wonderful, wonderful people uh, in the last few years, to include the Latrell brothers. You know, I've been on their podcast and became friends with them. Um, That's really cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had the opportunity. You talking about Marcus Latrell, right? Yeah, Marcus and Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. So I didn't realize he had a brother, but I had the opportunity to meet Marcus Latrell about six years ago, and I was like, "This is this is really cool." Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's I like the story about Jessica Manfrey, and you've referenced that in other. Uh, I think in the American Grit podcast. So she's she's a powerhouse. Yeah, I was, she is. I was, you know, I, I read a ton of her articles and everything. But hey, I, I have another kind of like the last three questions, but they're more rapid fire. Uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You, you, all right. So when you think of a, uh, a, a movie image that depicts leadership, who or what comes to mind? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a military movie. I mean, obviously, my brain goes to that i i know i know i know it's kind of hard not to but... um yeah i gotta this is weird nobody's gonna know this movie but young blood is a hockey movie and it's also part a big part of my life uh, it's with rob lowe patrick swayze it's there's a love story aspect to it um but young blood played by rob lowe is this young kid and he, he makes it to this higher level hockey team and there's a song in there that says you got to put one foot in front of the other and he's just out there practicing and just becoming the best hockey player that he can be um and he you know he ends up fighting like the goon of of the league and uh i just i took that song you got to take one foot and put it in you know in front of the other um and i took that to selection with me and i remember singing that to myself in my head a number of times on a lot of those long movements and um but that one there you know he was his own leader um he led himself into victory, uh, which a lot of people don't do, but but should and, and should have that uh, that intestinal fortitude to do so, because it's not really that hard to be your, your, a self leader, a self taught leader for yourself and others. So, young oh, the hockey movie. Never heard of it, but without just hearing the plot and who's in it, it totally sounds like a movie made in the eighties. Without even uh, yep. The whole yeah, it just screams eighties. It's funny you mentioned Rob Lowe because the last, the last one, of the uh, the next topic I want to go to is I call it the name game, where I'm just going to say a name and just whatever right. comes to mind. And the very first person I had on my list was Rob Lowe, uh, and it's based off a story that you shared with me at, at um, a few weeks ago. But yeah, Rob Lowe, name game. Yeah, well, I'm pissed off at Rob Lowe. I wanted. <laughs> Uh, did I tell you this story when we were at the you playoffs? Did. I, was, the... I was hoping you would. I, I was hoping you'd share it again. It's a it's a great story. Yeah, yeah. So Rob Lowe, he was in the suite next to me. Him and Magic <laughs> Johnson. And Magic Johnson was cool. Looked at him. You know, I was like, "Hey, what's up, man?" He was like, "What's up? Give me a thumbs up." We said hello with our eyes, and then 
And Rob, we were we were at the um, the World Series, and it was when during COVID, so yeah. it was it was all at Ranger Stadium, their Globe Life or whatever it is. Uh, but anyway, the game was over, and we were walking out of our perspective suites, and Rob walked in front of me, and and uh, he had his back towards me, and said, "Hey, hey, uh, young blood, you want to go?" <laughs> and and that was in the movie. I were the guys like, "Hey, let's fight. It's time to go." And Rob fought him, and I and I said it loud, and it was quiet, like. It, he heard me and I was very disappointed that he didn't turn around and at least acknowledge me for knowing what young blood was. Um, so, uh, it's no big deal, you know, but, maybe that'll be the name of this episode is screw you, Rob Lowe. Young yeah. Blood. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Another mentioned someone else he mentioned in that the other name I had in that, uh, the name game is magic Johnson, who is my favorite basketball player of all time. Yeah. Uh, respect i mean magic johnson um from what i understand just a, an extremely nice guy great basketball player funny charismatic i mean uh you got to respect him um he's not i mean I, I i'm gonna do michael michael jordan uh man will chamberlain magic johnson uh there's i don't know how to gauge him but yeah no that's good all right the last name for the the name game five finger death punch yeah, uh, tours, lots of tours with those. Well, three tours, but lots of shows. So yeah, I was the, I was the um, security manager uh, for Five Finger Death Punch. I was actually on my way out of the military uh, terminal leave, close to it at least. And my my boss at the time, Rolf Jensen, was just like, I told him, said, hey, somebody asked me, to be, you know, at that time, just security for Five Finger Death Punch. I have somewhat of a medical background, so it helped out. And he was just like, get the hell out of here, just check in. I got you. Uh, so I went on tour with Five Finger Death Punch uh, for American tour, um, South America and Europe, and uh, ended up uh, kind of working my way into the the lead uh, security management position. Um, and uh, yeah, it, I will say that it is hard on your body. I was uh, newly married, so it wasn't great for <laughs> it wasn't conducive to a a newlywed. So I had to <laughs> I had to bounce. So. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Uh, I do remember you telling me that. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure how it came about that info, but um, either way, one last question. Yeah, if there was, a, and this is a question asked at every single uh, end of every podcast, and that is, if there was a giant billboard with your picture on it for the world to see with your message on it, what would you want your billboard to say? And where would you want your billboard to be? Uh, well, I wouldn't want a billboard if it was forced on me because, well, that's just, I, where would I want it to be? Um, that's a tough one. These are some good questions I don't think that anybody ever thinks about. Uh, I don't have an answer for where I would want it to be, but the message would just, you know, never quit, never give up, be positive. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Maybe even throw 500 meters in there. I think that'd be. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could. Yeah, it, it, there's. I, I think I've just got so many. Yeah, just. Uh, just yeah, at the end of that, just 500 meters. Dot dot dot. 500 meters till the next Bucky's. <laughs> yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. We just had a Bucky's yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Hey, do you have any parting thoughts or parting shots? Uh, what do What do people normally say when you ask them that? Just whatever's on, the, like, how they feel, like, uh, anything, maybe the interview they didn't get to talk about, or uh, it's just just anything they just want to throw out there. Or if you people want to find you more about you or Alpha Lee Performance yeah. and, or, uh, and or the Green Bay Foundation, uh, where's the best places, uh, where are the best places to go? I guess parting thoughts, though, uh, is something that I struggle with all the time is, like, purpose and direction. I, and I, and I, when I talked about faith earlier on, um, and it's a question that I have all the time is, like, what is your plan for me, my man, you know, talking yeah. to God, uh, and, and only he knows that plan. Um, and I wish to God that it was something that, you know, I could ask for, but I know that whatever the plan is, is going to be given to me, but also by working hard, uh, you know, I can help shape that plan. A lot of people struggle with that. What's my plan? You know, what's, what's the future hold for me? Well, just, you know, keep working hard, uh, stay positive and working in the, in, in, in the right direction. Um, and I think that that plan, uh, it, it seems to be working for me. Um, you know, as that plan is, is coming to fruition, it's the plan that God, you know, has for me. So, uh, I'm very grateful, um, 
And then Alpha Lee Performance is one that was in my plan, but it's had its ups and downs. Um, we've just had some downs with COVID and, and, and the economy, but it's, it's on its way back up, you know, with, with yeah. the positive mindset. So, um, but if you guys, you know, if anybody's listening, they want to go to Alpha Lee Performance and support, you just go to alphaleteperformance.com and uh, use the code ELITE10 to save 10%. The Green Beret Foundation, for those of you that want to support the Green Beret Foundation, uh, it's thegreenberetfoundation.org. And if you are in Nashville on November 10th, we are having the Rock the Green Beret nice. uh, at Kid Rock's Big Honky Tonk. And uh, that is a good time. So it's a, it's a fundraising event for our, our, our programs and services uh, within the Green Beret Foundation. And I'm going to link all this and I'll have it for the show notes and all that stuff. Uh, cool. For everyone. Yeah. Hey, Travis, I, I can't express my gratitude for this. Man, this, this means a lot to me. And I don't know what it was, but I mean, you just really kind of took me under your wing at, at, at Mick this, uh, a few weeks ago in Atlanta. And it's not lost to me. I'm not the best at showing thanks or showing gratitude, but uh, just please know it means so much to me. It has resonated with me, and, and I, I truly cannot express what you've done for me and however I can best serve you or uh, you know anything you're associated with. Just uh, please let me know because, man, I, again, I'm just humbled and still kind of a little bit in shock. And it was just whether it was just talking to you at the mixer and not just you, but uh, I think Jenna and uh, Olivia uh, that mm -hmm. were with you. And yeah. then just sporadically throughout the week, right? There's hey, Martin, let me introduce you to this person. And then you like, hey, Martin, I want to introduce you to uh, Jessica Muse over there. And just, who, I mean, that yeah. was just one of a few examples. But Travis, man, seriously, thank you. Thank you. Thank well, you, you, you are a genuine individual, man. And I could tell that right off the bat. And your, uh, your introduction, uh, you know, it, Everybody, you've got that 30 second or that those five seconds to introduce yourself to somebody to make an impression. And you did just that. You did a really good job at, at your introduction. Um, and it was humble. It wasn't uh, in your face and like, hey, you got to get my podcast. You know what I mean? So um, you did a good job there. So keep that up. Thank you.